Good morning and welcome to morning prayer in the parish of Braley on Tuesday the 23rd of June. Uh, it's uh, great to be worshipping with you again this morning. I'd like to say a special hello to Lucy if she's watching, still waiting for that impression. Uh, let me know if you want some ideas of things to say. Nothing if not willing to take the mickey out of myself. Uh, today the Church is, or the Church of England is celebrating the life of Ethel Dreda, Abbess of Ely in 678, one of the lesser festivals of the Church but she'll pop up during the Collect later today. So let's begin. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise and the song of God's righteousness. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes his righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places in his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Uh, there are two appointed psalms for today. Psalm 48, which has the refrain, we have waited on your loving kindness, O God. Uh, and I'm going to read Psalm 52. Um, a little bit of politics coming in here, I fear. Why do you glory in evil, you tyrant, while the goodness of God endures continually? You plot destruction, you deceiver. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than the word of truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. Therefore, God shall utterly bring you down. He shall take you and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see this and tremble. They shall laugh you to scorn and say, this is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great riches and relied upon wickedness. But I am spreading like an olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I will always give thanks to you for what you have done. I will hope in your name, for your faithful ones delight in it. And the refrain for that psalm, I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. Faithful and steadfast God, nourish your people in this wicked world and through prayer and the scriptures, give us our daily bread through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is a fairly long one from the book of Judges. We've now moved out of Numbers into Judges, uh, and the reading for today is Judges chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to verse 23. Uh, and this is where we first encounter Deborah, the judge, who sends Barak uh, on a military quest 
um, and it's uh, it's the story of a battle that ends in with a rather gruesome murder involving a tent peg. So there's it's another one of those great stories uh, from the Old Testament, a great battle story from the Old Testament. So that's Judges chapter four, verses one to twenty-three. And we'll jump into the Gospel of Luke for our New Testament reading. And we're reading Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 21. And that's Luke 13, verses 10 to 21. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you're set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and do not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on, a sab on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. He said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what should I compare it? It's like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the garden. It grew and became a tree and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And again, he said, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. And the response to that reading from Psalm 119, open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonder of your law. Another fantastic reading from Luke's Gospel there. Um, many of you know me, know that I quite enjoy, uh, enjoy it when things are subverted. If I'm really lucky, I get to do the subverting myself. Um, but this is an instance where Jesus Sub, uh, subverts the rabbis in the synagogue um, because you just can't imagine uh, being told that uh, you wouldn't come to the temple on the Sabbath to receive healing uh, and, uh, and Jesus just heals that woman miraculously uh, and you know sort of puts the puts the rabbis in their place that why would you not come uh, to the temple on a Sabbath day to be healed. I also think it feels a bit like a, a, a bit of a lockdown reading, um, but the two comments at the end where uh, Jesus is uh, looking for comparisons to the kingdom of God, um, because certainly two pastimes that people seem to have taken up during lockdown uh, are gardening and making bread, uh, and both of which Jesus uses as an illustration of the kingdom of God. So well done to all of you who are spending extra time in their gardening or baking in their garden or baking bread during lockdown. You are representing the kingdom of God. Well done. Let's move on to our prayers for the day. Um, I was having a conversation with Cara during the week uh, or over the weekend and she said, this isn't like morning prayers done at church because we pray for people by name and we pray for if I remember rightly, because I've only never been to a couple of uh, midweek morning prayers, um, we pray for local schools and we pray for, in particular, care homes and we pray for those institutions by name. 
Um, so I'm really sorry. I, we haven't done that uh, as far as I can tell during the morning prayer. I will endeavour to dig out the list and, and see what we can do. Um, just to reassure you though, don't forget the uh, the buddy system is going, so you should be getting contacted by somebody from the church, um, you know, every week or two, um, uh, just to check in. And if anyone feels that they're not being contacted um, by that system or would like to be made part of that system, which we based on the electoral roll, please get in touch. And if you do have any prayer requests for morning prayer, um, if you get those to uh, the rector, David Oxby at parishofrabie.org.uk, um, or I'll put my email up as well. If there's anything you would like uh, us in particular to pray for, um, please do that as well. So, because I've not got the specific list, we'll play, we'll pray some generics this morning, and maybe next time I do morning prayer, we can be more specific. Father, we pray for our church family. You know them by name. We have them on a list called the electoral roll, but actually we know there are many more people in the parish that are part of your family, perhaps people that haven't yet joined that list, people that don't know about it, people that come to other activities that are not so linked to the electoral roll, perhaps messy church or some of the other services. You know your church family by name, you know every hair on our head. And we pray for your love, care and protection over all of them at this time. We pray for all the schools in our parish. And again, we pray for your protection and care for the young people that are going there at the moment. We pray that they will be kept safe and well and be able to have a valuable educational and social experience with their teachers and assistants and friends and all the other staff in the schools. So we pray for everyone working in schools. We pray for teachers that they're able to manage their classrooms and manage their work despite the challenges they're faced, faced with in keeping uh, the young people safe. So we thank you for their work and we pray for your continued strength for teachers and students at school. And we pray for care homes. And again, they're facing, still facing massive challenges at the moment. We pray for the staff that they're able to stay safe and keep their residents protected and well and to look after each other. And we pray for the residents, many of whom will be lonely or confused. They won't have seen relatives for a long time. We pray that they're able to feel still connected with their family and still feel part of the wider community. And we, we, we remember today anyone who's sick in body, mind or spirit, those in the midst of famine or disaster, victims of abuse and violence, intolerance and prejudice, and the bereaved, and all who work in the medical and healing professions. We pray for all of those different people with all of their different needs. And we know that you meet those needs day by day, Lord. So Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And our colleagues for the day. Eternal God, who bestowed such grace upon your servant Ethel Dreda that she gave herself wholly to the life of prayer and to the service of your true religion, grant that we, like her, may so live our lives on earth seeking your kingdom that by your guiding, we may be joined to the glorious fellowship of your saints. Through G Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that's our morning prayer for today. Have a great day. Stay well. Keep safe. Look after each other. Keep in contact. And have a good day, Lucy. Bye now.